Guten Tag, wir sind Helden, you heard just now today, and the next song you're gonna be hearing is Warcraft 3 OST, this is your radio host Grubby, and we are about to start the night's show, welcome to the stream everybody, we're gonna be playing some games of Warcraft 3, gonna be downvoting some of the maps that we uh, never really play anyway, get this show under the road, I'm on my main account, I'm gonna play some Orc. Have a good time, ladies and gents. The show has begun. And there we go, the best word. This is not the best word in the wor uh, world. It's just a tribute. Hello, OG Blizzard NY, Gubermint, here's Spimbo, Delia, Embrace GG. What's up, everybody? It's important to check the top right position because I need to know if he will contest with me for the circlet in the top right. Otherwise it would be a wasted trip. If he is top right I will go to the left side goblin shop. Just checking out, catching up on the HTC, stopping by. Cool. Cool embrace. What am I drinking? Uh, tea. Chinese tea. A gift from Sky. Okay, he is indeed top right. Double burrow. Just in case he goes straight for me, I have to build my burrow in a safe position. Like here. Ah, sneaky snake. Sneaky snake went... Oops. Mistake. I didn't mean to double left click. Yeah, he got the uh, double circlet. I mean, I had no healing anyway. Might as well lose it. Master? Yes. Yes. What do you 
Cancel the third grunt. No food for it anyway. Uh, we have much faster tech. Doesn't really matter that we lost blade. Our advantage lies in uh, other things now. grunts instead of a peon but the lack of lumber is is very real i could also make a war mail to fix with the lumber but the problem with that is that it will create a, a deficit in lumber before it creates a bonus because i'll have one less worker working There was a real risk that he would steal it, but I had no counterplay for it. Nothing that was worth it anyway. He only has one wind walk. So we can outlast this. First, you put some damage on him, make it less attractive for him to do the actual steal. Okay, he used it. Now we just wait. I'm not really using my shadow to be aggressive. Generally, when you lose your blade that early, although you get your faster tech, you should rather get a quick 50, good 50 food army. Make sure that that's faster, rather than trying to be super hyper aggressive. Because the problem is, if I try that, he's still gonna have more grunts. He still has more gold. He still has more circlets. So he's got the uh, early game advantage, especially those double circlets that he purchased. Better do it like this. Get some shadow level 2, maybe 3 eventually. I'm now gonna send a peon. To be in between and it gives me the chance to go for the other goblin shop i'll send it halfway to his base and then back to the middle because i don't know if he would attack me from the middle of the map or uh from uh, the right side so we do the initial scout and then we turn around Creeping without blade gets a uh, shadow hunter high level faster, but uh, it's also much slower creeping, so it's a bit of an issue. I think I'll prepare for a 60 food army. So that means making a burrow now. Oh, 
So he wasn't really ready to do that. He might have to use his invul. Or maybe he should wish he had. He's now hurt, although he will heal solve. There's actually a perfect time to attack him. With 53 food. Because he's still hurt. Uh, since he brought all his stuff, I'm gonna cancel Spirit Walker and I'm gonna change my mind. Whatever he was planning, I stopped him. And since he's super ready, I don't really need to go on with it. Instead, I will bank off of his state of readiness and make him ready for nothing. Cancel some solves, delay his readiness. And keep scouting properly. We have more info than him. Don't start the camp if there's a risk he's coming over here. I could start a camp, but it would be greedy. Make village, getting my upgrade. You might feel like, oh yeah, I'm not creeping. But yeah, neither is he, right? So it doesn't matter. I will draw him to my side of the map, which will stimulate a chase. Which, which means that I have a decent shot at uh, fighting with a greater army supply. Because he's already on my side. Just got my armor upgrade. Since he came all the way, it would not be cost efficient for him to turn around. So he's either creeping this or he's properly attacking. So I will get in position to do a surprise defense and to creep something better. He's probably doing the natural now. It's the only thing that makes sense. Okay, he actually attacked. So he outplayed my expectations. So that cost me one Kodo, but I am level 3. Pretty close game, man. Close fight. Yeah, GG. I mean, I've got 53 food, 
But the difference between winning that fight with 53 food and losing everything was literally one item here, one item there. Very close. Uh, we want to watch the replay for that. That was cool. <sighs> Took me a while to realize that my continued gold income was not as useful as literally shooting the Kodo right in front of my burrows. Alright, let's uh, start by changing the allied colors so that we both have our color. And does it keep changing blue, red, red, blue? And then we'll check out his uh, plan. We scouted each other and he sees where I am. And he knows that I'm doing one bro attack. So he gets Sarklet. And what I was afraid of is that he goes straight from Sarklet to my base. And I think that would have been the strongest play. But because bottom right is such a screwed position. He actually gets the second Sarklet before I get to it. Despite him buying another Sarklet there. That's the crazy part. That's how... Badly bottom side is disadvantaged. Thanks Floss twice daily. So he gets a double circlet. He now has really good trading potential. But keep in mind that my tech is faster. As you can see it's about 35 seconds faster. Maybe 30. In exchange he has more circlets. <laughs> so we, we saw this in the real game. In the end, I end up losing my Blade Master, some blocks, and yeah. Now he has to go home, he has to heal. The cost of his healing is probably going to be Sarklet and Heal Solve, which is 170 gold. He ends up using two charges on Solve, so he ends up using 66. So his total investment will be 170 minus 33, so 137 gold to get back up to full life. He will not be entirely full life. And he, he can't take damage on blade for a while. My cost is the same. 170 gold to revive my blade. So the main advantage he gets by killing and staying alive barely is 100 XP. He's got that over me. But I have full life bar immediately. Um, you know, at least as soon as I get revived. He actually chooses not to get uh, clarity. And he, ac he accidentally got himself hit three times three times with blade so he ends up using all heal solves four on his blade two on his grunts oops uh he reaches tier two and he starts shadow hunter he made a war mail but it was bad it was bad because um it delays his tier two tech even farther i don't really know why he got it his lumber is looking really good Finally starts his launch. No money for Bistri yet. My launch has started as well, but my Bistri is done. So I end up getting more Kodos, and you can see that. However, the experience lead that he has continues to get increased further as he solo creeps this camp and he steals one of my purges. Because he has four grunts and I have only two, he can creep much faster and it gives him blade level three. As soon as he had blade three here, what he should have done is windwalk, leave this place, get level 2.1 shadow hunter from this or maybe 2.2. And it, it would even be safer than finishing it like this because it would do two things for him. Windwalking level two now, he can put a heal solve on the blade master, which means that he's going to be full life. Like let's say if I catch him five seconds from now. You might say, finish the camp fast, use blade, but it's even better to start healing the blade master. And he gets to scout to see me coming. So in all respects, both for long term and short term, it would be better to send blade to the, into the map now. Instead, he finishes a little bit more. He does do that in the end, but he goes the wrong direction. What he really needs to know is if I'm here. Because he can get creep checked here and it'll be awkward. Getting an invo is safe, but it's a bit early to buy it already. Generally, you want to try to avoid it, push it back to the 50 foot, uh, the 50 foot mark, because now getting the invo delays his next unit. It's better to uh, invest after you reach 50. So he checks, sees that this one is done, draws back to get the uh, camp here, but sadly enough, he doesn't get the XP only with Shadow. 
Gets a very nice item, Boots of Cloth a lot, and Tome of XP. Doesn't use dust to protect it, but he gets that dust. He gets that with the shadow anyway, because I'm not there. Heads over here, I'm late. In fact, he was quite far ahead, and maybe he should have liked to take this fight. We're both 47 foot though, and I think the reason that he turns around is that he has partly units hurt, three units are hurt, and no Kodo. Kodo is always a strong indicator that you're going to lose the fight. And that's because he bought that invul, it slowed down a little bit, because he was actually upgrading in snare, but the late tech, it slowed down his Kodo a little bit, so he can't take this fight. Although I was hurt as well, the Kodo would probably do too much, and I had a greater amount of potion. Greetings, he's now level 2.99 shadow. So he's actually in a really good position. All he's got to do is creep this. This was actually so important. Once he creeps this, it would have changed the entire game flow because he'll be happy to take a fight, being Shadow Hunter level 3. For the rest, Shadow Mana not full, not enough Foody Launch items, so you should sub subtract a little bit of gold into uh, what will be necessary items. And his uh, next burrow is late. Unless he's looking to hit a timing attack, he should be adding burrows now, just to have the option to make more units over 50. Instead, he's getting double attack upgrades after already having an armor. Gold-wise, he's doing great, but he hasn't made provisions to react quickly to the situation by making a fifth burrow. I can say now that my perception of the game during the game was a little off. I never clicked his units enough to see how much he's upgrading or the fact that he didn't have Spirit Walker adept training yet. And he also crept a little bit more on Shadow than I thought. I felt more safe than I was. We're under attack. Unlike him, I have made provisions to go over 50 uh, earlier, but I haven't made use of it, and he now did make use of it earlier. So he also made a 60, I'm getting my 60. And what I thought was a move of luxury to creep this camp was actually one of necessity because I would have fought the entire fight with Shadow Hunter level 2. Though I must say that I am both unlucky and lucky at the same time. Unlucky in that I miss his army and that he decided to go for a swing around after finally getting that green camp. But I'm lucky because he didn't find me here, which could have just been lights out for me. He does have mana for Windwalk, but he doesn't use it to scout, and he narrowly misses me. For his efforts though, he does get a free Kodo, so he can't be too upset. Especially after he saw my Kodo, he should know I'm bottom left. And he does get in position for the most part. He now has 2-1 upgrades, whereas I am 0-1, which kind of explains some of the difficulty I had. In terms of consumable items, I've got double heal scroll. Potion of Healing, Greater Mana, Sobi Mask, a little bit of armor and a little bit of damage, and an Invul Potion. He has Heal Scroll, Invul, great items on Blade, but really poor items on Shadow, and no Mana Potion. So I have way more Healing Waves. For the rest, he brought 6 Peons, I brought 5. I also have a Hurt Raider, and I arrive in a Snake, and he arrives more in a, a Bomb. And he's got four food more, because he just killed the Kodo. It also all arrived already. So the fight breaks out. And for some reason, none of my raiders were using ensnares. Uh, I think I already used one and the other got eaten, so that was very uh, bad by me. This walker is attacking Grunt, which is great. Armor and damage type. His Kodo is attacking my walker, which is bad for me. Piercing versus unarmored. My grunts are attacking grunts or walkers, which is not ideal. And my raider is attacking grunt, getting attacked by grunt. Not ideal either. My Kodos are attacking blade, which is not ideal. And his walkers are attacking my grunt, which is not ideal. So... Like, armor and damage type, he's got a much better thing going. My main advantage is having more mana on shadow and two heal scrolls instead of one. 
and the fact that much of his army is attacking my blade. But I guess I can say the same for his. All his walkers are now attacking. No, two of his walkers are attacking a grunt, which is great for him. I'm focusing Kodo, but it's not dying so easily. This one helped me a lot. Though ideally it's 1-2-1 one, one split, but that took too much micro, so I just put them all in the closest burrow. That ends up hurting him a lot. And it's something that he could have easily corrected by sending his Kodo up and up. Instead he greeted out trying to uh, eat a grunt, which he was out of range of, and continues to take massive piercing damage. My peons have a really nice concave. But so do his. As soon as he starts losing stuff, this is where we win. We used healing potion, the armor items on blade to soak a lot of damage. And the double heal scroll with the greater mana potion. Finally we sustained through and even though we were 56 food both just 2 seconds ago. Suddenly he starts losing everything. It was really close and I wasn't as much ahead as I thought. Which explains why the fight was so hard. Shadow just revived. Uh, i give you some gold because I'm really wood starved actually. I shouldn't have brought militia. Can you, get, can you give me some? Yeah. No. Oh watch out. Uh. 